Florida State has been extremely close to beating Clemson in the last two seasons. In 2023, the tables will turn, and we're moving ever so close to the Tigers relinquishing the stranglehold that they've had on the ACC. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you guys coming to the channel as always. Excited to talk about today's topic. Uh, I think Clemson fans are a little bit worried right now. We're going to talk about some reasons why. We're going to go through uh, a few of my thoughts. I'd love to get yours down below as we start to look way ahead to the 2023 matchup against Clemson. I know that we're a long way off from that. I know that we got a long way to go between now and then. But I think it's time to start setting our sights a little higher at FSU and as FSU fans and supporters. And I think that's what we're going to measure success by this season. Clemson fans are worried right now. Don't let any of them tell you that they're not. Uh, I know they're still the top dogs. I know they're still the ones that won the ACC this year. I know they're still the ones that went to the Orange Bowl, though they got embarrassed in that. Uh, I think Clemson fans are scared out of their minds because they know that the run that they've had in this ACC is closing in. Now, I'm not saying that Florida State's overtaken them or Florida State's the team to beat or Florida State is definitively the better program, but they know that this run of easy ACC wins year after year after year after year is coming to a finish. Uh, they already lost the 2021 ACC, and they're probably not going to win in 23 either if Mike Norvell and the Knowles have anything to say about it. Jordan Travis is going to be a main piece of this. He's the best quarterback in the country, according to Pro Football Focus. We did an entire video on that, so I don't need to go through and defend myself against the angry Clemson fans in the comments that will be taking issue with that statement. But he's the best quarterback in the country when it comes to a, you know actual ratings and the, the way that you know people get paid a lot of money to break this game down, look at things. He's a lot better than Cade Klubnik is, and Klubnik could end up being a great quarterback. That's no shot at him. But if you watched him in that game against Tennessee, if you watched him when he got in, he's just not there yet. He, he's going to take some time to kind of develop into and be that guy for Clemson. Um, Jordan Travis being the best quarterback in the country is going to be a huge asset for Florida State. And it's going to be a big reason why they have a great chance to go into Death Valley this year and get a win. Um, he's much more experienced. He's much more mobile. Uh, and I think that you've seen Jordan take steps year after year after year here at Florida State. And next year is going to be no different. He's going to elevate his gameplay to another level. And I think on the road at Clemson, you're going to see him have one of those performances. I'm not saying like that performance that we saw in 2013, but I think it's going to be the best you've seen at Clemson since then. And I think Jordan will have a really, really nice day, night, whenever that's played. And I think he will outshine uh, Klubnik in that game. And I think that'll be huge for the Knowles. Uh, with the ACC divisional changes that are upcoming, they're almost guaranteed to have to play us twice. Florida State should absolutely be in the ACC championship next year. And if Clemson doesn't drop the ball, they will as well. I think they've got a great chance to get back there. But I think FSU has the easier schedule. I think that Florida State getting to play uh, Duke at home while Clemson has to play them on the road. Florida State getting Miami at home while Clemson has to play them on the road. And Florida State not having to play UNC. Florida State not having to play UNC this year like Clemson does is really, really big. I think Florida State most years is going to have the toughest ACC pod possible, having to play Miami and Clemson every year, and then every other year having to travel to Syracuse. But I think this year it works out pretty well. Miami's not going to be back, even though they've said that they will be for two decades. And Syracuse has a way to go as well. Clemson also has to play North Carolina State next year, and Florida State doesn't. I think that is a huge thing for the Knowles as well. Florida State has an easier path to get to Charlotte. And we'll see what happens through the pods. We'll see how all of it works out. But I think this is a three-team race between Florida State, Clemson, and UNC. Those two teams playing each other makes things pretty interesting. I think Florida State and Clemson matchup will be massive. But I think the ACC divisional changes will likely help FSU in 2023. I think the way that both of these teams finished the last season also means a little bit. Now, I'm not a huge believer in momentum carrying over from one season to the other. I don't think that if Florida State would have missed the field goal or Oklahoma would have driven down at the last second and scored a touchdown, that that would have somehow tanked FSU's 2023 season. 
But I do think it's interesting to look at how Clemson played in the second half of the year this year and how Florida State played in the second half of the year this year. Clemson got whipped three times from the Notre Dame game to the South Carolina game, who they just did whatever they wanted in that matchup, and then the Tennessee game. And Tennessee did it with a backup quarterback. I think Clemson is ultimately just trending downward, and I think that's what we're looking at, both on the field and the way they played, and then also in recruiting. There's a huge drop-off in recruiting this year for Clemson. They're used to stacking top five in 10 classes year after year after year, and this year to come in at 14th overall, it's just not very good. Now granted, that's still ahead of FSU, and Florida State needs to pick it up there as well, but the gap is closing. And that might not be because Florida State's doing their job and over-recruiting like they should, but Clemson's coming down to the pack, it seems like. They've been a drop-off on the field. They've been a drop-off uh, in recruiting. And Dabo's not really supplementing with the portal. He's gone on record and said that he doesn't really think it's good for college football and he whines about it and complains about it, but he's not taking advantage of it. Meanwhile, Florida State's been excellent in the portal, and they've made massive additions. They've gotten guys that have gone on to be all ACC guys, first round draft picks, and they've really done a great job. Clemson fans notice it, and they get frustrated. If you read their message boards, if you read social media, they're frustrated that Dabo won't dabble, nice pun there, in the transfer portal. And I think they're getting upset about that a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit about the coaching things that are going on at Clemson as well. But first, I want to tell you about Gramco. You can go to thegramco.com, use code TJ25. Maybe you have a Clemson fan that you want to send some gummies to, maybe put them in a little bit better mood. You can use TJ25 at checkout to get 25% off of your order. Again, TJ25, thegramco.com, the best Delta 8 products on the market. They're no founded, they're vet owned, and you can get 25% off of their products today using TJ25 at checkout. Appreciate them for their support. Go to thegramco.com and shop right now. Hiring at Clemson has been a little strange lately. Obviously, they've had some world-class coordinators there over the last few years, but a lot of those guys have moved on and left. Think about Elliott. And you th the other guys that they've had, like Jeff Scott, and you think about Venables, who we just saw in the bowl game. They've not replaced those guys with the same level of coordinators. And to Devil's credit, it would be impossible to replace guys like Brent Venables with a coordinator of that level. But they've not even attempted to. They've really just kind of done this internal promotion thing, try to mold people into those roles. And I think you've seen the drop off from that. You've seen the way they played on the field. You've seen what the recruiting has looked like. And it's just not been what we're used to out of a Clemson staff. It's not to say those guys will never be what those other coordinators were, but I think Dabo is choosing the harder route to go in replacing them. Dabo frustrated Clemson fans again by doing something he did a few years ago. He refused to move on to the more talented quarterback of the future and stayed loyal, I guess you'd call it, and stubborn to the quarterback that he had started. DJ wasn't the guy this year, and he had his best game against Florida State, of course, but he just wasn't that guy. And where would they be right now if Cade had come in earlier? Fans were frustrated. And Dabo shows that he continues to not learn from mistakes, as he did the same thing with Watson several years ago. He's making a lot more mistakes more frequently than he did in the past, and he's also growing more stubborn. Again, I know there are various different situations, but it reminds me a lot of the end of the Jimbo Fisher era at Florida State. Florida State fans know what to look for when the signs of the facade are cracking. They know what attention to detail looks like, what coordinators moving on, what stubbornness in decision making looks like, and there are some mirror images of it with Dabo Sweeney. I don't think the rug is about to be pulled out from under Clemson or anything like that. I don't think they'll have the same drop-off we did. But I do think that they're definitely getting a lot more angst in that fan base with some of his antics. I think that Clemson fans understand that their reign over the ACC may very well be coming to a close. I'm not saying that Clemson is done or Florida State's overtaken them or anything like that just yet. But I think Florida State has an opportunity this year to submit themselves back into that conversation. Clemson has dominated it for the last however many years. They've been the team to beat, and it's been almost impossible to even get close to touching them. That said, this year in 2023, their fans know what's coming, and their fans know how close Florida State is. They're worried about it, and they have every single reason to be. 
What are your thoughts? Where do you think Florida State and Clemson will end up duking it out next year? Do you think we'll see them twice, once in Death Valley and then once again in Charlotte? What will the Knowles record be against Clemson next year? And will this be the year the Knowles finally overtake them and take back the ACC, which is rightfully theirs? Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you're a Clemson fan and you disagree, I'm down to hear that as well. Again, this conference is still Clemson's right now. But it's hanging on by a thread. And I think the Knowles are about to cut that thread in 2023. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys soon. Go Knowles.